The fire that burns in the social, psychological, and spiritual dimensions of humanity can ruin the world. Or this fire can transform into community. It's up to us. Sitting in the fire, Arnold Mendel. In this program, and in this series, you'll learn about a group process called world work. A process committed to building community by paying close attention to power, rank, revenge, and abuse in group work. World work begins with the work of Dr. Arnold Mendel. Trained first as a theoretical physicist at MIT in Boston, he went on to study Jungian psychology in Switzerland. There he drew on other psychological approaches, Eastern philosophy, non-Western and shamanic traditions to develop his own approach to individual therapy. It's called process work. Today, there are thousands of people around the world who have been trained in this therapeutic approach. In the 1980s, with Dr. Amy Mendel and other process work colleagues, Arnie Mendel began to apply these personal therapeutic techniques to class, race, gender, and other conflicts that arise at the group and social level, a process that is now called world work. So world work works at the, at the most uh, everyday level of rights and distribution of power and distribution of money and distribution of uh, uh, respect and what have you, and also at this deeper level. All the feeling stuff and emotional human stuff, the upsetness, the antagonism, the great dreams and desires that we have, giving that a floor and letting that stuff come forward and speak. And so world work deals with learning how to manage and get deeper into the emotional and then even into the dream-like situations of all of us so that we can come together and work together better. The Mindells and other world work facilitators work with a variety of groups and businesses around the world. And over the years, they've held world work training seminars in Europe, in India, in the state of Oregon, and in the summer of 1999 in Washington, D.C. at Howard University. Here in Washington, as in all world work seminars, there's no agenda per se. The group as a whole tries to fairly sort through all the issues and concerns in the room and come to a consensus on which issue to focus. We have tried to get Northern Ireland on the board since we have arrived. I really would like us to focus on Holocaust and contemporary uh, anti-Semitism. I want to be heard. This is exactly what you do in international development. You push us back on the agenda, back and back and down all the time. Our sister is here, who is indigenous, who is invisible in this country, Native American Indians. In my country, on my land, I'm invisible. I'd Hold like to speak. I have, a, I have a topic for eldership. And we Thank just want you. to get ourselves on the board. Uh, we can go on with issues all day. I come from Balkans, and I would like us to focus on gay and lesbian today, so that we can really focus on what is happening over there tomorrow. On the second day, a contingent of five women from India confronted the group, detailing what it was like for them to come to the United States for this seminar and to see extreme wealth and waste all around them. When I came here to the U.S., I've been here before, but this time when I came, I just want to talk about something that I noticed. It's every time I go into a restaurant or a cafeteria, even this cafeteria downstairs, the helpings are so large. The helpings are just so large. I say, give me something smaller. The, the they portions say, no. are you so know? large. The, yeah, the portions the are so large, you know. And because of that, I see so much wastage. Just so much wastage. And if you could, like I said, I mean, as she said, you, you, just, you don't see the poverty. You'd rather throw it in the bin, you know in the garbage bin. You don't care. You know, there's a lot of, again, 
there's, there's, a lot, there's not enough awareness, you know. On the fourth day, okay. they came back. This time they were joined by other participants from countries in the so-called third world. Okay, the first thing I'd like to ask is, uh, I had a lot, we had a lot of people coming and telling us that uh, we, they wanted us back in here. I want to ask a question. Why do you want us back in here? Why is it important to you? Do you just want to watch us? Talk, talk more because we talked a lot. We talked for half an hour and we didn't really have adequate response. So I want to know, do you want to just to keep talking? Because I'm not going to do that. Okay, I, I, I first want to bring up the issue of the first world and the third or the fourth world. I want to know what defines third world. What, what, what do you mean when you say third world? I want to know that. Who defines it? Who defines what is first world and what is third world or fourth world? That's a question that should get answered. There was an answer that the International Monetary Fund defines that. that yeah, we answer. can pass the buck. That's right. I would like to know what you would like to call whatever you want to call. I want a definition of what you, what you think we are. I want a definition of what you think you are. I know what I am. Oh, um, excuse me. I, I just want to say, um, I want to be real brief here. Because the only world that I can really talk about is the world that goes on within myself. And I just want to go back to something that happened yesterday for me in working with the African American group. And I, I don't want to talk a lot about it now. But I want to talk just for a minute about the struggle that went on for me around doing what culturally I need to do and doing what I feel is right and responding to the right thing. And I feel like the first world and the third world or how we respond to the world is really about how we respond to the voice that goes on within ourselves. I am oppressed within myself. I mean, this, this presentation was beautiful because what keeps me from doing what's right and stepping out to you and talking to people who I feel can make an impact in the world and fighting for what it, what's right is going on within me because I'm afraid I'm gonna get hurt, I'm afraid I'm gonna get shut down, I'm afraid I'm gonna get killed by the people, by my people. I see that in white people all the time. They, I, they talk about what's wrong with racism and how bad racism is but every time they go to try to fight with amongst themselves or to stop it amongst themselves, they get killed. So how the hell can we step across to you to help you when we can't even fix ourselves, when we can't even do the work within ourselves that says, I gotta, I gotta work with me first. I have problems within my own culture, within my own group, African American group. I have to fight that, and I, I think what I'd like to talk about and like to hear about is what's going on within us that's keeping us from actually taking action outside this room to make a difference for people who are suffering and stop using them as an example so that we don't have to feel our own struggle and feel our own pain. Because I have pain, and yes, I, I, your pain is big, but I can't even get in touch with mine, really. I'm still trying to figure out how do I deal with my African-American brothers and sisters and how do I deal with going against stuff that I feel is hurtful? How am I going to reach out? How are white people going to reach out and really stop racism and stop imperialism when they can't even fix themselves? How are men going to stop their shit and be willing to be vulnerable and to be soft and to, be, and to care and to feel, just to feel? How are we going to deal with sexism when we can't even feel pain? Join us yeah. in the feeling. Join us in the pain. Yeah. How will we reach Sorry, out when we have so much difficulty and difference and conflict amongst ourselves and inside of ourselves, especially when we feel oppressed? And how can we make that bridge? How can we reach mm -hmm. out? It was a summary. Mm -hmm. The other really important point I just I, I must address before we go on is this question about being used. I heard it come up twice already. Murnell saying not wanting to be used and um, 
since that's been around for several days, I, I don't know how to address it. I just want you to know I'm thinking about it. And if you have an idea about how we can do that, please share that with us. I, I want to respond to Kevin. It is not true that you are not able to reach out to us. You do reach out to us. But the way, but the way how you reach out is with airplanes, with bombs, and with getting our resources, and with your capitalism that is, that is draining everything from the whole outside world. And I'm trying to understand what the struggle is here. But on the other hand, do you see, do you own the power I'd like to represent the U.S. I, I feel like I want to take it off my brother of color. I'd like to talk. Can I I'm talk? from Switzerland. I'm oh. from Europe. And uh, I want to be here too with you and try to stand up for our part in this. Uh, I have to say something, uh, Martha. I'm really sorry. But I thought that was a very racist thing to do. You didn't ask him whether he wanted to be taken off that responsibility. I thought he did really well. I have to say this, Martha. I can't keep quiet. Summary? Uh, Anurada is, is felt that it was racist of yeah. Martha to say and, that she's... And that may be that right. That may be right. I, I heard him saying he, he couldn't... It was, I, I heard him saying he was hard as an oppressed yeah. person to be in that role. Martha, That's what I heard. Martha, I think you mean well. I just wanted to point out that maybe you could have asked him. You're right. Kevin? I think that that's a key point right there, that uh, very often the first so-called first world uh, is trying to help. And the ways that we are trying to help actually are patronizing and hurtful. Uh, so I think that's something that just happened here that is happening out there. So that's just... I just want to ask you, how do you define yourself? That question is still unanswered and you've conveniently sidelined it. I can say how I define myself. I define myself as a human being living in this world who has, hold on, don't clap, who has connections to every other human being on this planet. And, and the way I hear that question, it's like, and I, I understand it, but I feel like you're asking a question of American people. There's places I can go. I'm not, I'm not American in some ways. And when I, can, don't, don't speak for me. I'm, you don't know what I'm saying here. Don't project what you're thinking I'm saying yet. Let me finish. We have third world conditions in this country. Let, would you stop? Let, wait a minute. I know my privilege. Let me say what I'm saying. There you go. There you go. Why aren't there more people of color here? Why can't we extend ourselves and see a bigger issue? And that's all I'm That's what I'm saying. It's a bigger issue. Would you relax? I want to see. Okay. Uh, let's, we want I'm, to just I'm make a point with here. These people. We're going to make a point here. I'm trying to show the connection. This is, yes, thank you. But we just want to notice that there's an edge here to bring this topic up. It isn't easy, right? And we want to notice that at the edge, everything else will come in because all our issues are here. And I want to ask if we can, maybe we can't. Maybe everything has to come in. But if we could have a little more patience with this. How am I saying it? You're doing great. This um, developing world. This is, there's, there, I know look, it's look. happening here. Completely. Michael, Michael. And I'm saying that's the way we can connect Michael, so we Michael, can talk about Michael, this. Michael, 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 okay, I Michael, Michael. I didn't say it right. Thanks. I, so what do you what we don't that? want happening here what do you is two that? marginalized groups pitted against each other. That's what we don't want right now. Right. Two and marginalized groups. I think that our African American brother raise a very important question. How, it, how can I join the struggle when I myself am a victim of the same things that you're talking about, that we're striving about? I think we need to join around that. Now, I think that there's some models for it. It's a question all the time, but 
I want to say that there's no struggle that was won internally. There's always outside and alliance support. The African-American struggle got support from outside. The South African struggle got support from outside. The Caribbean struggle got support from African-Americans and Americans. So we're talking about international struggle here and alliance building. We're not talking about separating. We're talking about creating awareness and understanding how that, so that we do not perpetuate these kinds of stupid parochial demarcations that stop us from joining around humanitarian efforts. I'm not I too sure what, what the are. two of you are doing, actually. Yeah. I think, but I feel... I think, uh, I think I, we ha because if, if we do, we have to be able to, But at I, the same I'm, time, I'm, but the brother is speaking too. But I think that we, from the Caribbean and from the third world, I'll stand down. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I was cut off. I know, like, can, can you, don't gasp me. Don't give me your, I was talking, I was, I was, I was what? It's what? You're an American. We're Indian. Wait a minute. You're wait a, a man. minute. I'm wait a, a minute. This is what you see. I'm older than you. This is what you see. What I I'm live is disenfranchisement. Food. Just as you live, disenfranchisement. Come with me. Join with, with me. me. Understand Join what here. I'm saying. I'm not. Look. The hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. Michael, she, she Michael, me over Michael, here. you're being used. She called Michael, me you're over being here. You're being really you called me over. Yes, but you're being used, Michael. Stand on, Michael. You're being I'm used. I'm saying I'm not coming Michael, over there. I'm standing used. in the middle. I'm not taking a side. Okay. I'm not taking a side, Neelam. This ain't about taking sides. This Michael. is about being in where you are right. and knowing it. Time. I'm letting you know that okay. I'm with you. Let her speak. Let us speak, let Michael. Speak. By being with us, you let us speak. You support us by listening to us, Michael. Yes, but when, when I hear something I feel I need to respond to, I need to be able to talk too. This is a dialogue, no. not a monologue. It's not a dialogue, oh, Michael. You've been putting her down. Wait, yesterday, putting her down, yes. I was asking her not to cut me off as I was trying to develop a thought. Are you aware that you're a man? Are you yes, aware yes, she's a woman? Yes, I'm aware that she's a woman. Are you aware? That and I'm saying that women, women have different kinds of privilege too that I don't have. Why can't you talk about me? Why can't you talk about me? What would talk you like? about what, me what would you now. Like? What would I you? don't want you to what? talk about yourself. I wasn't talking. Look, I said that I live in a world. I, I can't talk about you. I, all I know is me. Michael. And what I know about me. Michael, Michael in the third world, in, in the third okay. world, the most oppressed women. Not everyone might women. know. Okay. Okay. You don't about the oppression that. of women the, in India. Well, I don't understand that. But well, at an experiential, I know at an experiential level. That's an assumption. At an experiential that level, Michael. What is an assumption? At an experiential what, level. What is an assumption, okay. Michael? Let's okay. have this out. Like what is an assumption? That I don't know that women. I trust like these people right here. It's an assumption that I. It's an assumption that I, as a man, do not understand that women are the most oppressed group. In third, in Sharon's right there. Yes, in my third world countries, I'm, I'm the most oppressed group in third world countries right. and the world right. are children, regardless Michael, of gender. Michael, this is again taking it away from the issue. And to are, us, you, are you ready to own your American privileges? We are talking about us now. Why do you bring in? Children? Are you talking about women, or are you talking about the third world? Are you talking about the world? Come on, what are we? Right now, Michael, right, right. about men and women. Well, then and the issue's right changing now, then. Right the now. The issue's changing. No, right I want, now. Okay, I would like somebody to recognize for the group that the issue is being changed here. Huh? There are different right. issues. There are different issues. Right now. Michael, right? And I, there's issues of the. I, I don't want this to be dominated world, by and men. There's issues of men and men. women. We are, we are, come on. Look, look. We are. We are here, we are talking about issues of the so-called third world. Now, there's some, there are people here who are Africans as well as Indians. And we have a first world and a third world here in the United States. But we have a third world. 
out there that is suffering yeah. and it's here. Thank I, you. It's here. I also want to point out that a man had a privilege to leave. We don't have the privilege to leave. Anurada, I want to say I hear you and I support you to come forward and I don't expect you to say another thing. I heard you the other day. I heard you when you sat in the middle. I heard you say it took your whole year's salary to be here, Radhika. I heard you women speak in the middle here so bravely. And I respect the fact that you don't want to be used to deal with this issue. And I, as a Western white from a developed country, so-called developed country, want to own the fact that when you spoke the other day, I felt my own consumerism, my own uh, wastage of things. I see it around me, I do it myself. I am unconscious of it. I heard you speak, and I'm so happy to hear you speak, and I want to invite other people to come here where I am now to pick up that message that you bring to us about the unconsciousness that I have around the way that I use and abuse my privilege of money and of consumerism. I support that, and I just want to make a quick statement that I feel sad that one, I feel sad that one person feels hurt and left. I just want to say, please, as we try to work on this really difficult issue to people, let's try not to hurt each other more than we inadvertently do. We all matter and we're all important. And it's I think it's going to require that persons from the so-called world listen a bit more and refrain from talking, the urge to talk, because really this is what the problem is, is that when we go to the table, that we always have to stand up, we have to cry in order to be heard. You see, and I ask you to reframe, just let us talk for a while. Let's tell our story and let's see how we can join. That's a request for us to listen. I'm listening. This is so hard. This is so difficult. It's, it's, it, this is what happens in real life. It takes so much of fighting just to get one word in. And I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to begin. It's, it's really a very, very huge issue. But, but just the fact that we have to fight so much just to get a definition of what you think about us. That's the first question I asked. Who, what you think about is what, what, you, what you see when you see us. Because it's reflected in your eyes. It's difficult, this is not our style. And being like this is like a survival issue for us. If we, don't, if we are not like this, we're going to be completely, I don't know, killed. We will be, there will not remain any of us anymore. So I just want you to realize that it's a question of life and death. And when you ask me, what do you want me to do? I want to ask you, if you were going to die in the next minute, what would you do? Anuranda, I, I've known. Will you give us some space, please? We have to say please, we have to say give us space, give us space. I feel like a beggar. And I'm not a beggar. This is world work. Otherwise, cancel the world. world. This is just work that you are doing. I think we have really a high dream. We, we have high dreams about changing the world. That's why we are here. It's not easy for us to be here. You've heard about the economics. Why have we come here? Because we want to do something that might change for the better for, for us, all of us here. You're connected to us. If you don't change, we are going to die. If we die, you will. It's it's life and death. Please wake up. <laughs> Don't take so much time. <laughs> I want to. Uh, uh, I feel taken over. Please don't take us over again and again. Anurada. 
The, the Western side is having trouble staying quiet. It's this hard for us to shut up. We're I, so I, used to, on this side, talking all the time. It takes everything for us just to shut up. I want to clear some of the... Um, I want to clear some of the projections that are given to us. Now, we claim that there are a lot of corruption in the, in the, um, in the third world. There's a lot of misuse of funds. And we know that's in your mind. There's a lot of um, corruption. Um, we know that's there. Um, but we want to speak, speak to that, too. It's the corruption is what the governments in the West support. When we ask for aid, we get military aid. We don't get aid to, to feed the poor, the children. The displaced coming from the economic transformation or or the structural adjustments, as the IMF might say. So we can speak to that, and we can own that we have some corruption among us as well. So I would like to just clear that. So when you look at us, you don't see that we squander a lot of money. Yes, we do some of that. But it's working as agents for the Western governments, and that's why it is happening as well. We don't want a box to be provided to take money from the box. You see, what we want is fairness. We have creativity and knowledge in the, in the, in, in, in the mm -hmm. economic self. We develop products, but what we have is that, that we have trading blocks like um, the Europe, um, the Europe. We have, we have United States uh, with NAFTA, and you have, you're talking about free trade and free world, and we can't get our products into United States and Europe, but you can send all of your products down there to us and flood our markets. What the hell do you think that is doing to our children and our ability to educate ourselves? What do you think? You think we are begging? We have creativity, we have knowledge. Okay, we ask for fairness. That if your products can come into our country and our regions, that give us equal access to the United States markets and the Western markets as well. Now we in the Caribbean now fighting life and death over banana issue. How many of you know what a banana issue? How many of you decide to send a vote? How many of you decide to send a vote to your representative about? I gotta tell them. I want to tell them because they're in denial. I got to raise it to raise them freaking well denial. We're not begging. They must do their own work. They must do their own work. There's a difference of opinion within the third world about how to work on this. Yes, sister. Well, you know, I sent that email that I talk about here about the disparities in the economic aid to, to the former communist countries and as opposed to Africa where you have um, a doctor to, 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 uh, to 10,000 and in Africa it's to 100,000. And it's only this morning that I got one response. One response talking about that disparity. So it is not, it is not to me, I have to raise some awareness because the questions we asked by my African American brother about how we can join. Because I think it's, it's looking at pain. And when you look at pain, sometimes it reminds you of your own pain and, and it debilitates you. I know. So I think we have to answer the question. I know, I know your pain. But let them ask the questions. Let them take the struggle. Let them find out. Already one of our sisters has left us. Brinal is planning to go away too. We're not feeling heard. We're not feeling met. You're giving them. You're giving them information. Let them come closer. Let them find out. I feel oppressed by this okay. responsibility of giving information to you. Yes. Why do I have to do that? Yes. You have destroyed my world, you have destroyed my identity, you have destroyed my ecology, and you want me to tell you what you have done to myself? That's painful. Sorry. That's really painful. And I'm oppressed to express my feelings, to be heard. I feel oppressed by that. I feel oppressed by your expectations. You're speaking in our style, not your own. And I'm wanting to support your style. I, we hear your pain and your anger also. Just want to check in if this is your style. Yeah, it is. I want to say that it's very difficult for us, women in India, to be heard. So when we do speak, it comes out like bang, 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 bang. Finally got a voice, finally got a forum. So it might seem oppressive to you, our style, but it's our struggle, it's part of our struggle to be heard. 
It hurts me so much when one of us gets up and goes out. It's taken us two days to get this space. Three days. Three days. Are you, are, are we ready, are you ready on this side to listen to the other side or should we be quiet over here? Just checking in with you. We would like to check. I'm ready to listen, but I want, I don't want an off-the-cuff answer, you know. Can you sit with our pain? That is what we are talking about. Can you really sit with our pain? Yeah. It's hard to sit with pain. Some of us are used to doing things, trying to do something, make it better. I hear this request from the third world, which is the, the need of the whole world to sit with the pain. Yes. And to just sit yes. silently with the just pain. Sit. That's that. right. Sit with the pain. Sitting silently and listening to yourselves inside. And it's it's, it's really difficult for us not to listen when, we, when you want to say something because we want to respect everybody. It's difficult for us when somebody leaves the room because that's disrespectful to that person. It's painful. Yeah. It's painful when we have to, if you ask me if, if you can talk because I don't want to say no. Somewhere inside me, I have a feeling that you need to understand me without talking. Maybe we have to feel the pain, but don't get in a trance, don't, don't escape, don't meditate, I mean, don't get in a trance. It's easy to get in a trance. And it's more painful. Please don't use our, please don't use our pain to access your spirituality as an experience. Just repeat what Neelam said. Don't use our pain to access your spirituality. As an experience, it's not, it's not an experiment, it's not an experience that, okay, this is spirituality time. I come shopping to India to get spirituality. This isn't your time to do your mantra meditation. <laughs> you're just feeling pain because you have never felt it you have never looked at yourself and you saw us doing that so you're doing it and I still, still feel oppressed I feel the responsibility is not yet own nothing is being done about that so I'm not able to get in touch with my pain my feelings 
I'm sitting here feeling oppressed and used again. I want to tell you why I left the room. Senior spoke about Yugoslavia and I shut her up. Michael spoke and I shut him up. He left the room. And I felt I was right. <laughs> and I felt such pain <laughs> that I left the room too. And when I was outside, somebody explained it to me. Two. They told me that I was just colonizing the space in here. And it was so painful to be the colonizer. Two. It was Two. just so painful. <laughs> I want to know <laughs> why the British who stayed in India for almost 400 years did not feel that pain. I want to know why they didn't feel this pain. If they felt this pain, they would have left. I just want to know this. Not everybody felt colonized. Just want to say that. What happened was also beautiful. Last night, an African-American brother was telling me about the number of um, that after that they are after while after certain if you you know commit certain crimes in the United States that you don't have a vote and you know I got so incensed because a lot of people don't know that some of the largest populations black populations in prisons in the United States and and I was incensed because it's it's, it's really a violation of human rights but you see the way this, this the UN is constructed. The African American community don't have a voice at the UN to talk about human rights. And this is like what the African American brother was asking when I'm in so much pain and, and oppressing this country with no voice at the UN with human rights like I do, how can I help? You know, and I think it's my cause. I want to say the African American, but it's my cause to use my voice at the UN to say to the United States that you are violating some human rights in your own country and stop the crap about democracy, moralizing about democracy. Thank you, Amuli. I think that's how we can help. And we just shifted levels. I just want to mention that from the interpersonal to the larger picture, we're going backwards and forwards. Talking about resources being sent from capitalist countries to help the developing countries. I always say there's a peanut giving, one peanut giving and five peanuts taken back. Because I give the example from Ghana and from other African countries I've lived in. Anytime the IMF or whichever organization says, Ghana, you got to increase the production of cocoa, which is our main production. We are giving a loan to increase the production of cocoa. And the year the cocoa production comes up, the world market determines the price, and the price goes down. So the farmers who produce the cocoa, the loans they got invest into the production of cocoa, they don't even get one quarter back because the prices have been knocked down and they are constantly in debt. And so the government is not able to pay back this loan and the interest continue to stay. And I have lived in uh, Tanzania in a place where coffee and tea is grown. And it is exactly the same. And I've heard world market make a kind of propaganda in the world media saying Ghana is an example for all African countries as far as development is concerned. I said no. Ghana has become worse because there are many more children who can no more go to school because of the policy of the world market. There are many more children who cannot afford, the parents cannot afford a single cent to buy a single dose for chloroquine and children die of malaria and they should not die of malaria just because of the policies from the West. And we want to develop and our, our legs are cut down by that kind of policy. A lot of people here are, are concerned about raising the standard of living, of becoming richer. But 
when you get richer, we get poorer. <laughs> we can't all get rich together. There just is not enough on this world. But that is not it. You come, then you come to my world and you tell me that I can be rich. You tell me that I can own a car. I can have everything. But either you can have it or I, ca I can have it. We both can't have it. So why do you come and sell this dream to me? Why do you sell this dream to me? A dream that I cannot have. Why do you create this desire and longing? Please stop doing it. Just stop. Well, the question is whether the people in developed, in developed countries in the West are prepared to take a cut in the standard of living. Are we looking for an answer from the West to that question? Bang. Bang. The Tao doesn't want you to speak, maybe. Yeah. These are bombs, too. This is a form of bomb that you're talking about, that we're doing. And we're doing it to ourselves. This, this, this crazy, out of control, raising of standards of living. We can't go on like this. None of us can. And spending seven weeks in India, I mean, I got that you're our teachers for how we need to live on the planet. And, and I'm not talking about the poverty. Of course, we don't want people in the extreme poverty. I'm we talking. are used again. OK, well, I'm sorry. In terms of the, the reverence for the resources, that's what I experienced, and that's my experience. And I'm sorry if you feel used by me saying that. I'm really sorry about that. If you think our way of life is something that you need to learn, we would be in your position now. And we've done something wrong somewhere because we're still developing. So when you say you have to learn from our style of living or being, I don't believe you. I'm actually not spe Please don't take this personally. I'm looking at you as a role, because this is what is told to us very often. How are we listening? Are we listening? with an open mind, or are we thinking maybe sometimes, oh, we'll listen now, but we'll get them later. Just a momentary awareness to notice. Who are we listening? It's good to listen to people who are oppressed, third world people, and third world people in this country but the opportunity that we miss that I hope we go back to is the opportunity of listening to yourselves. Not getting into the spiritual bypass by chanting or having an individual selected in some way to get away from the pain and to distract you from the pain, but to stay with yourselves and experience that pain that you're a legacy to and we all are a legacy too. I think a moment ago we were sitting in pain because we're, you're perpetuating a system that was established by your ancestors. And for the first time, I think this is the truth, for the first time in my life I had a sense of white people being spiritual beings. It's always been a struggle. But I think, I think for a moment we were sitting in a place where you were not only sitting for yourselves, but sitting for your ancestors and going through a process of repentance, changing your mind, not by talking, which you do very well, not by listening on some level, which you do very well, and negotiating and having these kind of forums, but sitting in the pain and agony that I think is healing. Can I say something? I feel we're, we, we keep addressing somebody and uh, we, I kind of feel that, that somebody is remaining like 
nobody over here because it's not getting taken up. And I don't know what the group feels, but I feel um, if somebody would take up that role so we could really get one, some, some kind of response, because it's like we're doing all the work here, I feel. Honorata, you are suggesting, in my understanding, you're suggesting that somebody play a role here of that? That's what I thought. We, I, I feel we're addressing, and somebody who is not there, Yes. And I, I feel something from that side would be good, at least you, for me. Okay, so someone's going to come and play that. Mm -hmm. and I want to say ahead of time, there's such a diversity among the folks who have been speaking in the so-called third world. There's such diversity there that finally, after that is done, there probably will be disagreement that it was a good thing at all. That's Unless you as a group can... We have to ask you as a group to yeah. consent to that before we as a whole group do that. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, thank you. Yes. I, I Make sure because they've been saying, folks yeah. have been saying, they don't, that's not their style and what have you. So right. talk with one another for a few minutes and then we can go on. And the rest of us wait and listen while they caucus. Also recognizing that some people don't feel included in this process, that there's diversity in the group that there's a third world in the United States as well that isn't being addressed in this process. Many things are happening. Then you speak, speak from your economic privilege, white as it might be. Speak from your economic privilege. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to speak to that role and it's not a role for me. The, I mean, the part that I'm talking about is me. And a couple of days ago, my mother came to town. Uh, she flew on an airplane. I play, paid for the airline ticket. The cost of the ticket wasn't much, I thought. But it was enough that if it had been given to some sort of relief organization or an organization supporting education in Africa or somewhere, it could have changed someone's life. Uh, I went out uh, for dinner with a friend. It wasn't what I thought was an expensive restaurant, but the money that I spent could have saved someone's life somewhere. So without thinking about that, I made a decision that to eat that meal was more important than saving someone's life somewhere. And that's what I call normal. It's. It's the only life I know. And um, I don't want to cry about this because we can't afford Why not for white, no, we can't afford for white men to be numb or, you know, to say, oh, you know, it's not poor me, it's, it's, it's a wonderful position I'm in. I have all of this and, you know, and I can make the decision. It's my decision to make. I, I can't say that I want to change because I'm not changing, so it's a lie. But there's something you're crying about. No, I said I But you say you don't want to change. Yeah, no, I'm I'm feeling something. I just don't want to. I don't want to be weak about it. I don't think it's weak to cry. But I would like. I, want, I, want, I, I, take the, I take back that part. I don't want to argue in, no, into I just that, wanna, that part. I want to support you because I think when you show your feelings about it and express them, it's more sharing than talking. And how, how, it's, is it's it? important. how is it that when we start talking about the money that we spend and the privileges that we have that we keep going off into two marginalized groups arguing with each other or us arguing about feelings, whether feelings are good. So let's stay okay, with the... Let, let, let me stay with... Stay with the this money. one thing. It's Where not that long. And what I need in my life are not... I mean, I thank you for telling me all this, and I'm not putting anybody down to say that the information that you're giving me, all of the facts, all of the arguments are arguments that I make myself. They're facts I know. The information is very much available in this country for people who want it. It's not, it's not the knowing that. It's, it's the going out and eating that dinner and 
what I need is, is people who are struggling with that, uh, who have some clue of, of what to do. Thank you. I, w I want to thank Neil. <laughs> He's contributed to my being here. <laughs> and I hate my poverty. <laughs> It's, it's because Neil's contribution and the contribution of others that I am here. <laughs> but it puts me in a bind. <laughs> I said we feel so poor inside, Neil, that we don't think we deserve your money. And then we feel bad that you gave money. Mm. It's difficult for both of us. So I feel like there are a lot of different levels that we're uh, bringing up. And uh, I, I just want to share my experience of sitting in the silence that you demanded of me. Which I think in some way, I hope, addresses what keeps me from acting the way that I long to act. Personally, and then I noticed that I was looking for something to make me feel better, whether it was looking for my looking at my fingernails, whether it was looking for somebody to say something, what's next? What is the next thing I can consume to make me feel better? And I realized the poverty of my condition. Uh, I am a person that has um, plenty of money in terms of the um, world standards and uh, um, many privileges, almost every privilege I could think of. Every almost every privilege. I can't think of uh, a whole lot I can't think of. I can't think of any privileges offhand that I don't have. And, uh, and uh, the more I grow, the more privileges I get. And the more money I make, it seems like the uh, also more privileges I, I get. Um, so it for me personally, it's a evolving process of of um, uh, transforming. Uh, into something else, and uh, I'm not quite sure, but I, I sort of, I got to the pinnacle of my privileges, and in, in, the, in the sense of using them to gain for myself, to avoid my own death, to be immortal. And uh, now I realize that uh, as I turn an older age, that that's gonna be an impossibility. So, uh, so now I'm at the, sort of that apex where I, 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 I'm not quite sure uh, where that transformation is going to go, but I can feel it coming. And uh, so I'm going into a trance, so I, I can't quite. What I would like to hear is more of what, you know, what we're coming back to is why those dinners? That's right. Why does that continue? That's the question. You know? Because I love to eat wonderful food. I love to, I love to uh, 
partake in the deliciousness of life. I like to, to, to go out to a wonderful restaurant and, and taste wonderful food. And I have the means to do it. That's why I do it. Yeah, but can you do that with awareness? Uh, sometimes, and with sometimes awareness. not. What kind of awareness? With awareness, you know, it's like if you know, I'm sorry, if you know what's happening on a global perspective, would you still choose that kind of a lifestyle for yourself? That's what I'm talking about, that, that level of awareness, you know. Uh, that, that um, I've experimented with that a lot, and what happens is um, I have to have um, a number of channels going. Uh, if I have the channel of the world that people less fortunate than me cannot be in this restaurant, uh, it would be beyond, way beyond their means, then uh, that channel will take over the other channels and I, want, I might as well not go to the restaurant. On the other hand, uh, and I know I'm hurting some feelings here, I yeah. can see that. Uh, so uh, uh, on the other hand, there's a, another channel that goes on that, that's in me that says, uh, if I don't enjoy life, I contribute nothing. So uh, it's, it's kind of a difficult thing, and it, it just kind of swirls around like a, um, it's kind of like quantum, you know, it just kind of swirls around. You're speaking about difficult things. Yes. Thank you. I, For everybody. And hearing about difficult things. That's yes. right. And you're not alone. I just feel paralyzed by the levels at which people can enjoy themselves, you know? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you for listening on this side to all of us who've listened, and thank you for speaking. And um, God, so much has happened. I'm seeing that it's 25 after 12, and it might be a moment with your permission that we could make a temporary uh, pause. There's an action. Why don't you oh. offer your action option? Go yeah, ahead. Uh, I would like to offer that at 1.30, people who want to figure out what economic options are, what our options are in our behavior, in our decisions, to, that, that, that would be work among the people of the, of the, who have been on this side, that we can do that. Or that can, so I'd like to offer the 1.30 time over there, uh, just behind those blue things, um, for people to gather and figure out what action is going to be taken by us on this side. Uh, yes, it's good you think about the dinners, but I also want to see changes in global policy. I want to see changes in, in your attitudes in supporting multinationals which exploit. I want to see changes in a global level and a personal level and a systemic, I don't know, whatever levels there are, I want to see changes in all of them. And that is not going to take just one hour. It's going to take probably months. But I want, to, I want some kind of commitment. I also want to thank you for giving us this forum to be here. I want to thank you for accepting Anuradha and to train her. Because when she, when she comes back to us, she is our teacher. So every one of you, please put your bit behind that. We want her trained and we want her with us. We want, we, yes, we want her skills. We want you to train her for us, to train her. Thank you, and Anna Rada is training me. For more information and online discussions with the participants and facilitators of this and other tapes in this series, please contact us at our website, www.iworldwork.com.